Maputo, known as Lorena Section O marks before independence, is the capital and largest city of Mozambique. It is known as the City of Acacias, in reference to acacia trees commonly found along its avenues, and the Pearl of the Indian Ocean. Today, it is a port city on the Indian Ocean, with its economy centered on the harbor. According to the 2007 census, the population is 1,766,184. Cotton, sugar, chromite, sisal, copper, and hardwood are the chief exports. The city manufactures cement, pottery, furniture, shoes, and rubber. The city is surrounded by Maputo province, but is administered as its own province. History Portuguese rule on the northern bank of Espirito Santo estuary of Delagoa Bay, an inlet of the Indian Ocean, Lorena Section O Marx was named after the Portuguese navigator who, with Anticube Nio Caldera, was sent in 1544 by the governor of Mozambique on a voyage of exploration. They explored the lower courses of the rivers emptying their waters into Delagoa Bay, notably the Espirito Santo. The forts and trading stations that the Portuguese established abandoned and reoccupied on the north bank of the river, were all called Lorena Section O Marks. The existing town dates from about 1850, the previous settlement having been entirely destroyed by the natives. The town developed around a Portuguese fortress completed in 1787. In 1871, the town was described as a poor place, with narrow streets, fairly good flat-roofed houses, grass huts, decayed forts, and a rusty cannon, enclosed by a recently erected wall 1.8 meters high and protected by bastions at intervals. The growing importance of the Transvaal led, however, to greater interest being taken in Portugal in the port. A commission was sent by the Portuguese government in 1876 to drain the marshy land near the settlement, to plant the blue gum tree, and to build a hospital and a church. A city since 1887, it superseded the island of Mozambique as the capital of Mozambique in 1898. In 1895, construction of a railroad to Pretoria, South Africa, caused the city's population to grow. In the early 20th century, with a well-equipped seaport, with piers, quays, landing sheds and electric cranes, enabling large vessels to discharge cargoes direct into the railway trucks, Lorena Section O Marx developed under Portuguese rule and achieved great importance as a lively cosmopolitan city. It was served by British, Portuguese, and German liners, and the majority of its imported goods were shipped at Southampton, Lisbon, and Hamburg. With the continuous growth of the city's population and its expanding economy centered on the seaport, from the 1940s, Portugal's administration built a network of primary and secondary schools industrial and commercial schools as well as the first university in the region a Euro the University of Lorena Section O Marx, opened in 1962. Portuguese, Islamic, Indian and Chinese communities managed to achieve great prosperity a Euro, but not the unskilled African majority a Euro by developing the industrial and commercial sectors of the city. Before Mozambique's independence in 1975, Thousands of tourists from South Africa and Rhodesia frequented the city and its scenic beaches, high-quality hotels, restaurants, casinos, and brothels. The Mozambique Liberation Front, or Frelimo, formed in Tanzania in 1962 and led by Eduardo Mundlane, fought for independence from Portuguese rule. The Mozambican War of Independence lasted over ten years, ending only in 1974 when the Estado Novo regime was overthrown in Lisbon by a leftist military coup a Euro the Carnation Revolution. The new government of Portugal granted independence to all Portuguese overseas territories. The words, this is Portugal were once inscribed on the walkway of its municipal building. After independence from Portugal, the People's Republic of Mozambique was proclaimed on June 25, 1975 in accordance with the Lusaka Accord signed in September 1974. A parade and a state banquet completed the independence festivities in the capital, which was expected to be renamed Confumo, or Place of Fumo, after a Shangun chief who lived in the area before the Portuguese navigator Lorena Section O. Marx first visited the site in 1545 and gave his name to it. However, after independence, 
the city's name was changed to Maputo. Maputo's name reputedly has its origin in the Maputo River. The statues to Portuguese heroes were removed and most were stored at the fortress, and black soldiers carrying Russian rifles replaced Portuguese army soldiers with Western arms in city barracks and on the streets. Most of the city's streets, originally named for Portuguese heroes or important dates in Portuguese history, had their names changed to African languages, revolutionary figures, or pre-colonial historical names. After the Carnation Revolution in Lisbon, over 250,000 ethnic Portuguese pulled out virtually overnight, leaving Mozambique's economy and administration unmanageable. With the exodus of trained Portuguese personnel, the newly independent country had no time to allocate resources to maintain its well-developed infrastructure. In addition, authoritarian Stalinist policies and bureaucratic central planning made the newly independent country slip into an extremely precarious condition since the beginning, and so the economy plummeted. Frelimo, now the governing party, turned to the communist governments of the Soviet Union and East Germany for help. By the early 1980s the country was bankrupt. Money was worthless and shops were empty. Starting shortly after independence, the country was plagued, from 1977 to 1992, by a long and violent civil war opposing Frelimo to Renamo, the Mozambican Civil War. This war halted economic and political stability in the city. Since the peace agreement was signed in 1992, the country has returned to its pre-independence levels of political stability. This stability is an encouraging sign that makes Mozambique a promising country for foreign investment. Geography Maputo is located on the west side of Maputo Bay, near the estuario do Espirito Santo where the rivers Tem, Umbaluzi, Matola and Infuline drain. The bay is 95 km long and 30 km wide. At the extreme east of the city and bay is the island of Inaka. The total area covered by the municipality of Maputo is 346 square kilometers and borders the city of Matola northeast and east, the districts of Maracan to the north, Bone in the east and Matutani at the south all of which are part of Maputo province. The city is 120 km from the South African border at Rosano Garcia and 80 km from the border with Swaziland near the town of Namacha. Administrative subdivisions, the city is divided into seven main administrative divisions. Each of these consists of several smaller city quarters or barrows. Climate, Maputo features a tropical savanna climate. Maputo is a relatively dry city, averaging 814 mm of precipitation per year. The city has relatively short rainy season lasting from November through March. Maputo also features noticeably warmer and cooler seasons, with its warmest month on average about 7 AA degrees Celsius warmer than its coolest month. Situated on the Indian Ocean, Maputo is particularly vulnerable to climate impacts such as cyclones, flooding and sea level rise. Poverty and inequality, which are concentrated in the overpopulated barrows, further exacerbate climate change vulnerabilities in the city. Infrastructure the central area of Maputo corresponds to a planned city with square blocks and wide avenues, with Portuguese traces and their typical architecture of the 1970s. After the Carnation Revolution military coup in Lisbon, Portuguese refugees fled in massive numbers close to the date of independence, and the resultant lack of skills and capital, in the context of a fierce civil war and government mismanagement, contributed to its state of dereliction in the years following these events. Nevertheless, the city itself was never damaged, since it was tacitly considered neutral ground during both the colonial and the civil war. Recovery of the older infrastructure has been slow and most property developers in recent years have decided to invest in the construction of new properties rather than rehabilitating any of the existing ones. The rates for property in the city are high as investment increases, larger numbers of businesses are hoping to locate within easy reach of the airports banks and other facilities. The infrastructure is expected to spread out across vacant areas of the city hopefully easing property prices within the next couple of years. From Maputo, in 2007, the municipality of Maputo began a project to seriously consider rehabilitating the city's infrastructure. 
Promaputo was a project that began as cooperation between the local city council and the International Development Association of the World Bank. The first phase took place between 2007 and 2010 and was chiefly concerned with developing the systems, knowledge and planning required to support the gradual overhaul of the infrastructure. The project was broken into several key areas and a budget allocated to each of these, namely, institutional development, financial sustainability, urban planning, urban infrastructure investment and maintenance, metropolitan development. The total financial allocation for this phase was 30 million US dollars. In 2011, PROMAPUTO2, the second phase of the project began. This phase is to last until 2015 and a total of 105 million US dollars will be invested. A special integrated financial management information system will be developed and implemented together with geographic information system. These systems will help the municipality control its budgets and manage tenders, while the GIS will allow for precise information about land location and titling to be kept. Several roads will be expanded and improved and the Avenida de Julius Nero will finally be completed. Financial sustainability for the project will be guaranteed through the improved collection of property tax. The project also coincides with the recent overhaul of the road safety and traffic regulations which was an antiquated system that had not seen changes since the 1950s. Amongst the new regulations, heavy penalties and fines now apply to many detrimental actions done by automobiles, such as pollution, loud noises, and illegal maneuvers. In addition, Electronic parking meters have now been installed in some areas of the CBD to curb the chronic shortage and wrongful use of parking space. Building projects, in spite of its previous instability, Mozambique is experiencing one of the fastest growth rates for a developing country in the world. The projected growth rate for 2011 is expected to be around 7.5%, some of it centered on the construction of several capital-intensive projects in Maputo. Some of the more notable developments are listed below. Edificio 24 is a mixed use development that will be located at the center of the city along Avenida 24 Jolho and Avenida Salvador Allende. There will be a total of 12 floors, with the bottom two designed for underground car parking. The project has been designed to accommodate 25 retail establishments as well as number of offices and apartments on the topmost floors. Amenities include a gym swimming pool and a spa. Construction began in 2010. Maputo Business Tower The Maputo Business Tower is a 47-story building that, at its expected completion in 2013 or 2014, will be considered the tallest building in the country at 190 meters. The $110 million project is being developed by a U.S. company with construction breaking ground in late November 2010. The building has five levels available for parking roughly 600 vehicles. The ground floor will have space for retail establishments and the topmost floors will be reserved for luxury apartments. This project has since been cancelled. Radisson Blue Hotel, the international hotel chain, Radisson Blue has begun construction of a 12-story building with 154 rooms in one of the city's trendiest spots on the marginal along the beach. This new property will feature a modern design. The hotel is due to open in the first quarter of 2013. Vodacom, this is a 15-story building for the second largest telecommunication company in the country. Vodacom is one of Africa's largest telecommunications companies based in South Africa. It is projected to cost around $35 million and construction is to be completed by 2010. The building is designed to produce 30% of the energy it requires. Maputo Waterfront, it is an urban regeneration project that is being developed at site of the former annual industrial fairgrounds. When it is completed will offer a number of facilities both for leisure and commerce. The estimated cost for the entire project is expected to be $1.2 billion. Rehabilitation Projects, in February 2011, the president Armando Gaibaza announced that the Vila Algarve would be restored to its former condition and the building transformed into a museum for the veterans of the Civil War. The Vila Algarve belonged to the International and State Defense Police during colonial rule. 
it was where political prisoners and others accused of conspiring to harm the regime were taken for interrogation and torture. There are claims that several individuals were executed in the building. No dates have been released on when the renovation is to commence. The building has changed ownership several times and has been an off-on residence for squatters. It is considered one of the city's most beautiful pieces of architectural work. Sports facilities, Maputo has a number of stadiums designed for football, which can be modified for other purposes, such as the new Estadio do Zimpito, Estadio do Maxiquan and the Estadio do Costa do Sol which can seat 32,000, 15,000 and 10,000 people respectively. The largest stadium in the metropolitan area is, however, the Estadio da Makeva, located in neighboring Matola municipality. It opened in 1968, in Makeva and was at the time the most advanced in the country conforming to standards set by FIFA and the International Cycling Union. The cycling track could be adjusted to allow for 20,000 more seats. It was the site where Portugal officially handed over the country to Samora Macal and Frelimo on June 25, 1975. In 2005, the Birmingham-based reggae group UB40 held a one-night-only concert in the stadium filled to maximum capacity. A newer stadium called the Estadio do Zimpito which is located in the suburb of Zimpito will be opened in 2011. The stadium will be built in time for the 2011 All-Africa Games with a capacity for 42,000 spectators. Beginning in the 1950s, motorsport was introduced to the city. At first race cars would compete in areas around the city, Pilana and along the marginal but as funding and interest increased, a dedicated race track was built in the Costa do Sol area along and behind the marginal with the ocean to the east with a length of 1.5 km. The initial surface of the new track, named Autocube Dromo de Lorena Section O Marks did not provide enough grip and an accident in the late 1960s killed eight people and injured many more. Therefore, in 1970, the track was renovated and the surface changed to meet the safety requirements that were needed at large events with many spectators. The length then increased to 3,909 km. The city became host to several international and local events beginning with the inauguration on November 26, 1970. The track was abandoned after 1975 and events only occurred sporadically such as in 1981 when the government allowed the sport again. Since 2000, interest has been rekindled by the Automovil and Touring Club Demo Section Ambique and several events including go-karting, drag racing and motocross are planned. City planning, in the years directly after the independence of the country, city planning efforts were put on hold because of a lack of expertise and a limited budget available for renewal projects. However, due to the speedy growth of the city as well as the increased interest for tourism, Foreign investment groups have developed plans independently. Street names The street names were changed after independence in 1975. Close ties with the Soviet bloc highly influenced the new names that were chosen as did removal of names referring to colonial era figures. Transport Airports Maputo International Airport is the main international airport of Mozambique. The new terminal was opened in 2010 with a capacity for 900,000 passengers per year. Work has begun on the construction of a new domestic terminal which will have a capacity for many more passengers at any given time. The construction work will require the current building to be demolished. Buses Maputo's transportation needs are mainly served by minibus taxis called Trabas, which are believed to transport the majority of the city's commuters. In an effort to resolve a public transport crisis in the city, the state-owned company, Transporte de Mo Section Ambique has recently acquired a new fleet of 270-plus buses. There are three major bus terminals in the city, at Bexa, Masur, and at Junta. Ferries Ferry boats departing from Maputo to the district of Katem are available during the week. A ferry can carry approximately 20 vehicles per trip. Trams Maputo was home to one of the first tram systems in the world commencing in February 1904. At first the lines ran from the central railway station to the city municipality building. It is said that the establishment of the tram system caused some protests from the general public as certain classes had limited access to its use. 
trams lost favor in the second half of the 20th century as cars and buses became more common, and they have not been in use at all since 1936, although parts of some of the tracks can still be seen coming up through the tar in certain streets, like Arb 24 de Jolho. Ports The main port of Maputo handled 17 million tons of cargo in 1971, at its peak. It was part of the trio of Mozambique's main ports for the Nekela Bera Maputo route. Today, it is managed by the Maputo Port Development Company, a joint venture of Grindrod and DP World. The government has allowed the firm to manage the port until 2030 in order to upgrade much of its infrastructure that has been destroyed after years of stagnation. In 2010, the dredging works in the channel were finished and the port of Maputo can now handle larger vessels, such as the Panamax vessels, with more cargo. In addition, Investments are being made for specific types of terminals such as, bulk liquids, granite, metals, coal, a new terminal for vehicles is also planned which will allow for 57,000 vehicles to be moved per year with a peak 250,000 under an agreement with Har Paragraph E or Tolanas as potential transshipment route between the Middle East and Europe. Coal will also be exported from the Matola side at a rate of 10 million tons per year. It is envisaged that by 2020, the port will generate about 160 million US dollars per year. By 2030, the port will be able to handle up to 25 trains a day and 1,500 trucks for a total of 50 million tons of cargo per year. The total investment will exceed 500 million US dollars. Other means, a recent introduction and an alternative are three wheelers commonly known as tyke tucks in some Asian countries. The three-wheeled bikes, called chapellas by the population, are cheaper to own and run and have posed a serious threat to the conventional taxi cars. Culture Maputo is a melting pot of several cultures. The Bantu and Portuguese cultures dominate, but the influence of Arab, Indian, and Chinese cultures is also felt. Architecture Maputo had always been the center of attention during its formative years and this strong artistic spirit was responsible for attracting some of the world's most forward architects at the turn of the 20th century. The city is home to masterpieces of building work by Pancho Guedes, Herbert Baker and Thomas Oni amongst others. The earliest architectural efforts around the city focused on classical European design such as the central train station designed by architects Alfredo Augusto Lisboa de Lima, Mario Viga and Ferreira da Costa and built between 1913 and 1916, and the Hotel de Lama designed by Herbert Baker. As the 1960s and 1970s approached, Maputo was yet again at the center of a new wave of architectural influences made most popular by Pancho Guedes. The designs of the 1960s and 1970s were characterized by modernist movements of clean, straight and functional structures. However, prominent architects such as Pancho Guedes fused this with local art schemes giving the city's buildings a unique Mozambican theme. As a result most of the properties erected during the second construction boom take on these styling cues. Film and cinema, before television was introduced in 1981, Film and cinema had a prominent position as a form of entertainment in the lives of Mozambicans especially in Maputo where there were no less than a dozen movie theaters by the time of independence. In the 1950s and 1960s, at the height of racial segregation, most of the movie goers were either European whites or South Asians, each group having their own designated locale. Black Mozambicans, although more heavily discriminated against, also enjoyed movies and makeshift theaters. Some of the cinemas can still be seen today, such as the Charlotte, Gil Vicent, the Scala, 222 and the Dicker, although not all are functioning for their intended purpose. The movies screened at the theaters during Portuguese rule were heavily censored. Movies containing sex, violence and themes with a political nature were not allowed but despite the restrictions, it was the first time Mozambicans were able to enjoy entertainment that was for the most part in line with what was prevalent in the rest of the world, thereby greatly increasing cultural affinity. After 1975 and the ensuing mass exodus of European whites, for a time no censorship regulations were in place and Mozambicans could watch content that was previously banned by the dictatorship a Euro at this time Bruce Lee in his films became immensely popular. However, 
once Frelimo and the nationalist movement gained momentum, any external influence considered as originating from the decadent West was again not allowed. It was at this moment that Mozambique's ruling party Frelimo realized the immediate potential films could have in delivering propaganda relatively easily. For much of the late 1970s and 1980s, the local film industry was geared towards creating homemade productions depicting socialist ideologies which placed great influence on the family unit, the non-commercialized production of agriculture and political autonomy. Maputo has been the setting for many Hollywood blockbuster movies such as The Interpreter, Blood Diamond and Ali. Associa Picavolt Pound O Nar Cleo Art. An important cultural and artist center in Maputo is the Associa Picavolt Pound O Nar Cleo Art. It is the oldest collective of artists in Mozambique. Seated in an old villa in the center of Maputo the Nar Cleo has played a significant role in metropolitan cultural life for decades. The two best-known and most influential contemporary Mozambican artists started their career at Narcleo de Art, the painter Malangatan Nwenya and the sculptor Alberto Cusano. Over 100 painters, sculptors and ceramists are members of the Narcleo, which regularly stages exhibitions on its own premises and over the last few years has actively participated in exchanges with artists from abroad. The Narcleo became well known for their project transforming arms into tools and objects of art. It played an important role for reconciliation after the Mozambican Civil War. The exhibition of art objects such as the Chair of the African King and the Tree of Life was shown around the world, among others in the British Museum in 2006. Maputo is home to the Dokunima Documentary Film Festival, an international festival showcasing documentary films from around the world. Main sites, during its five centuries of Portuguese colonialization, the city has gained several examples of Portuguese architecture. Most of the noteworthy buildings are former colonial administrative buildings or current government buildings. The city's landmarks include Fortress of Maputo, Central Railway Station, Municipal Council of Maputo, Cathedral of Maputo, the Museum of Natural History, Vila Algov, the former location of Portuguese secret police, Hotel Delana, Tanjiri Gardens, Parks and Recreation. The city does not yet have a very expansive list of parks and other recreational areas. However, at the center of the city lies the Jardim Tanjiri which was formerly called the Jardim de Vasco da Gama. It was designed in the 1880s by a British architect, Thomas Oni. The entrance of the park is designed in the Neo-Manilan style. After independence, the name was changed to the current one and a statue of the country's first president was erected. Education Maputo offers several options for education with pre-schools, primary, secondary schools and higher education institutions. The quality of the syllabus is said to differ greatly depending on whether an institution is private or public. Higher education Mozambique's largest higher education institution is the Universidade Eduardo Mundlane which was established in 1968 as the Universidade de Lorena Section O Marx. Most of the university's faculties and departments are located in the city of Maputo with nearly 8,000 students attending 10 faculties. Some faculties also exist in Berra, Quelimane, Nampula and in Hamin. Since the 1990s there has also been a rapid growth of private education houses offering higher education such as Instituto Superior de Cia and CIAS e Tecnologias de Mo Section Ambique, Instituto Superior de Tecnologias e Gesta Pando and Instituto Superior de Transports e Comunis a Picavolt Micronis. Secondary Education In the secondary education market, there is again a strong divergence between private and public schooling. Maputo's private schools include the The Aga Khan Academy, Maputo, Princess Cinderella Kindergarten, Primary and High School, Willow International School, Maputo International School, American International School of Mozambique amongst others. Some expatriates have chosen to enroll their children in schools in El Sprout, South Africa and Waterford Kamleba in Babane, Swaziland. Health Services Maputo has several hospitals and clinics, including the city and country's largest hospital, the Hospital Central de Maputo. Other hospitals include the public hospital Gel Joseph Copyright Makemo, and the private clinic Asomas Shield, 
the Clanica Cruz Azul and Bakesland Hospital Privado located across the Portuguese school. The construction of Hospital Miguel Bombarda began in 1900. In 1976, Samora Macal renamed the hospital as Hospital Central de Maputo. The hospital has 1,500 beds for inpatients and has an estimated staff number of 3,000. It is made of a multi-block structure with 35 separate buildings spanning an area of 163,800 m2. The hospital has six departments, medicine, surgery, pediatrics, orthopedics, gynecology and obstetrics. It also has divisions for ophthalmology and otolaryngology and a morgue. The hospital provides services for an average 700 outpatients a day and over 1,000 a kg of washing is done daily. In the early 1990s, a section of the hospital was divided and turned into a private clinic offering higher quality services for those who could afford it called the Clanica Especial de Maputo. The residence for the head of medicine is on the corner of Avenida de Eduardo Mundlane and Avenida de Salvador Ind. It is a historically valuable structure which was completed in 1908 and has since the 1990s been converted into a charming restaurant with colonial themes called Restaurante 1908. The upper floors are still used by the hospital as offices. Notable residents International relations Twin towns are Euro sister cities, Maputo is twinned with, see also. Dilagoa Bay, Lorena Section O Marks, List of cities in Mozambique by population, Metropolitan Maputo, References. External links, Photos and Map of Maputo, Maputo Port Development Company, Maputo International School, American International School of Mozambique, Maputo Travel Guide from Waiki Voyage, Article about the Arms for Arts Project of the Narcleo de Art, Website of the Narcleo de Art, Mozambique Business and Information Portal, Leading Mozambican Tourist Operator